Today we'll be covering Chapter 37, Obstetrics and Care of the Newborn. We'll be using the Pre-Hospital Emergency Care 11th edition, and this is brought to you by Southern Star Health Education. Overview and lesson topics, we're going to be covering a little bit of the anatomy and physiology of the obstetric, obstetric patient, antepartum, pre-delivery emergencies, labor and, uh, and normal delivery, abnormal delivery and care of the newborn. Childbirth is a natural process. On occasions, EMTs assist with out-of-hospital deliveries. Complications of pregnancy, labor, and delivery are not common, but EMTs must be prepared to manage them when they occur. Remember, women have been delivering since the beginning of time. We're just there to assist. Anatomy of pregnancy. The ovaries produce hormones. They also release eggs, also known as ova. The fallopian tubes, uh, fertilization usually occurs uh, at the fallopian tubes where the sperm meets the egg or the ova and transfer to the ovum. The fallopian tube also serves as transfer to the ovum to the uterus where it actually gets embedded. The uterus, you got three sections of the uterus, the fundus, the body, and the cervix. The cervix dilates to allow delivery. Three layers that we have in the uterus is the endometrium, myometrium, and the perimetrium. Remember, the endometrium is the most inner lining of the, the three layers. The myometrium is the muscular layer, and the perimetrium is the outside layer. The smooth muscle layer uh, contracts, contracts during labor to allow expulsion of the fetus. Placenta is a temporary organ of pregnancy attached to the inner uterine wall. It's very highly vascular, provides for fetal nourishment and waste removal, and separates from the uterus after delivery and it's expelled. The cortical cord attaches to the fetus to the placenta itself. The umbilical vein carries oxygen and nutrients to the fetus from the mother, and the umbilical cord arteries carry deoxygenated blood from the fetus to the placenta. Amniotic sac encloses the fetus, contains about 500 to 1,000 ml of amniotic fluid, may rupture at the beginning of labor. The vagina, this lower portion of the birth canal, extends from the cervix to the external opening of the body itself. Here we see a diagram on of the uterus. If you notice that the umbilical cord is attached to the placenta itself. The placenta is actually, at this point, uh, attached to the upper layer of or the upper section of the uterus itself. Uh, you have uh, the amniotic sac, which is surrounded by fluid. And then right around the area, the area where the head is, there's what we call a mucus plug, which is going to be one of the first things that we see once the head starts getting expelled. Menstrual cycles. A cycle averages about 28 days and is controlled by estrogen and progesterone. The first day of the cycle begins with menstruation. During menstruation, the endometrium is shed. After menstruation, the endometrium is rebuilt. This endometrium is used by the body or the fetus and the body for nourishment to the, to the fetus itself. For the first 14 days of fertilization, the ovum is in the pre-embryonic phase. The period from day 15 to 8 weeks is in the embryonic stage. The period from 8 weeks to birth is in the fetal stage. At birth, the baby is called a neonate, and pregnancy lasts about 280 days or 9th calendar month. Physiologic changes in pregnancy. It's caused by the hormones growing fetus and increased metabolic rate. Many body systems are affected. Reproductive system. The uterus substantially increases in size. The uterus is extremely vascular and contains about one-sixth of the mother's blood volume. The mucus plug forms in the opening of the cervix and the breast enlarge in preparation for lactation. 
respiratory system, the mother's oxygen demand increases, the respiratory tract resistance decreases, uh, tidal volume increases by 40%, and the respiratory rate increases slightly. Oxygen consumption is increased by 20%. Cardiovascular system, the cardiac output increases, maternal blood volume increases, maternal heart rate increases 10 to 15 beats per minute, the blood pressure decreases slightly in the first and second trimester and returns to normal in the third trimester. Gastrointestinal system, nausea and vomiting are common, uh, commonly occur during the first trimester. Bloating and constipation may actually occur from the decrease of peristalsis. Urinary system, the renal blood flow increases, glomerular filtration increases, urinary bladder is displaced superiorly and anteriorly, increased the risk of injury by itself also, and the urinary frequency increases in the first and third trimesters. Musculoskeletal system, the pelvic joints loosen as a result of hormone, ch hormone changes, the center of, the, of gravity changes caused by the heavy uterus, accompanied by a lower back pain. Postpartum conditions. You have hyperemesis, gravidarum, which is extreme morning sickness, is accompanied by severe nausea and vomiting. You have an increase of hormone levels may cause the severe nausea and vomiting itself. And the partum condition, uh, you have ass uh, the assessment, you have se severe nausea, severe vomiting, excessive salivation, headaches, syncope, and jaundice. medical care. Care is primarily supportive. Ensure inadequate airway, ventilation, and oxygenation. Antepartum conditions are causing hemorrhaging. Uterine bleeding may occur or may not be associated with vaginal bleeding. Hemorrhage may be life-threatening. Causes include spontaneous abortion, placenta previa, abrupto placenta, ruptured uterus, and ectopic pregnancy. In spontaneous abortion, deliver, this is when delivery of the fetus and the placenta before the fetus is viable, before 20 weeks of gestation. Most often occurs before the 12th week of gestation itself. Patient will present with cramp light lower abdominal pain, similar to labor, have moderate to severe vaginal bleeding, which may be bright or dark red, and passive tissue or clots may also occur. Another cause for hemorrhaging uh, could be ectopic pregnancy. You have a fertilized ovum which is implanted outside of the uterus, usually in the fallopian tube. The tissue which surrounds the developing embryo then ruptures. Diagram here of uh, ectopic pregnancies. About 90% occur in the fallopian tube. Uh, you have some that actually occur uh, outside of the uterine wall. Um, and remember, the, the ovum itself is going to find blood vessels. So it might actually be also, you know, attach itself to the intestines in some occasions. Assessment of ectopic pregnancy, you're going to have dull aching pain, shoulder pain, vaginal bleeding, tender bloated abdomen, palpable mass in the abdomen, and decreased blood pressure. Emergency medical care, follow general guidelines for emergency medical care of the pre-delivery emergency. You have antepartum conditions causing hemorrhaging. Pathophysiology is a condition is caused by abnormal implantation of the placenta near or over the cervix itself. Excessive bleeding may occur as the cervix begins to dilate and the bleeding is painless. Hemorrhage may be total, plus, uh, partial, or marginal when it comes to this condition. Pathophysiology anticipate to treat the patient for shock. Here we have the, in this slide, we have the placenta actually developing right next to the cervix. 
and that is the only way out the baby's going to come out so it starts pushing in the in the, while the the surface itself is actually dilating and might actually cause rupture of the blood vessels that attach to the plus, from the placenta to the uterus Ruptural placenta abnormal separation of the placenta from the uterine wall prior to delivery fetal uh, reduction of fetal blood flow causes fetal hypoxia inadequate nutrient delivery and poor elimination of carbon dioxide and other waste products in the maternal side you have severe hemorrhage and hypovolemic shock if you notice on this one the implantation of the placenta is in the right place the only thing it separates itself before it's supposed to so you're going to have bleeding a lot of times you're going to have dark bleeding as opposed to bright red bleeding in these conditions Assessment, look for vaginal bleeding, abdominal pain, lower back pain, uterine contractions, and symptoms of hypovolemic shock. Emergency medical care, administer the same care as for placenta previa. Administer con high concentrations of oxygen and treat for hypovolemic shock. Ruptured uterus, you have possibility of the uterine wall rupturing, releasing the fetus into the abdominal cavity. This causes a high mortality rate severe maternal hemorrhaging and severe fetal distress and requires immediate surgery here's a diagram of the ruptured uterus if you notice the placenta itself tears up causing the baby to actually be uh, expelled into the abdominal wall remember it's it's the mortality rate is very high in this and surgical uh, is the only way to actually be able to cost survivability within the patient and the baby assessment history of previous uterine rupture history of abdominal trauma more than one, two previous births prolonged difficult labor constant severe abdominal pain signs and symptoms of shock emergency care follow general guidelines of emergency medical care of a pre-delivery emergency and the part of seizures and hypertensive emergencies we'll be talking about seizures during the pregnancy status epilepticus is especially dangerous for a pregnant woman provide the same care as any seizure patient transport the patient on their left side or with the right hip elevated at least 15 degrees to the left if they are at, gre at greater than 20 weeks of gestation now when it comes to seizures uh, we do worry in hypertension we do worry about eclampsia and preeclampsia and we'll talk about preeclampsia and eclampsia later on during this this lecture pregnancy induced hypertension maternal blood pressure is greater than 140 over 90 milligrams uh, of mercury on two or more occasions in at least six hours apart this is a, this results upon delivery of the, the baby itself now preeclampsia and eclampsia preeclampsia occurs most often in the last trimester and is most likely to affect, affect women in their 20s who are pregnant from the first time or for the first time eclampsia is more severe form of preeclampsia and it includes coma or seizures now the easy way to remember this uh, would be that preeclampsia gives you hypertension once you have a seizure, you name it eclampsia. Pathophysiology, you have a history of hypertension, diabetes, kidney or renal disease, liver, hepatic disease, or heart disease. You have no previous pregnancies and a history of poor nutrition and sudden gain weight. assessment findings you're going to find this altered mental status abdominal pain blurred vision or spots before the eyes excessive swelling of the face fingers legs or feet complications usually occur in the third trimester and supine hypotensive syndrome the weight of the fetus compresses to the inferior vena cava when the patient is in a supine position remember in a supine position you have the patient lying on, on her back and you have 
the vena cava actually lying right next to the spinal column. So at a certain point, you're going to provide pressure, which basically causes blood to back up, causing uh, a hypertensive state. Supine hypotension syndrome assessment, dizziness uh, or lightheadedness when a supine position, tachycardia, cold clammy skin, and decreased blood pressure. Emergency medical treatment, place the patient on either side uh, or elevate the, the right hip at least 15 degrees. Consider dispatch information, any female between the ages of 20 to 50 could potentially be experiencing obstetric emergencies. Based approach, take standard precautions, assess mental status, airway, breathing, and circulation. Secondary assessment, gather a history, examine the abdominal region, and obtain a set of vital signs. Include appropriate questions such as, have you ever been pregnant before? If so, how many pregnancies? Which is basically the term, medical term that we use is gravida. Uh, how many pregnancies result in, in live births, which is para? Uh, have there been any previous complications? When uh, was your last uh, normal menstrual cycle or menstrual period? Abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and other, other signs and symptoms, vaginal bleeding, passage of tissue, weakness, dizziness, altered mental status, seizures, excessive swelling of the face and extremities, and hypertension. Emergency medical care. Provide the pregnant patient with the same emergency medical care you would provide to any patient with the same signs and symptoms. If the patient is at 20 weeks of gestation or more, position them to avoid supine hypotensive syndrome. Reassessment. If the patient is stable, repeat every 15 minutes the reassessment. If unstable, repeat every five minutes. Maintaining the mother's circulation and oxygenation is critical to saving the fetus. Performing CPR on a mother may actually save the fetus itself. Labor and abnormal deliveries. Labor is a process that consists of contractions of the uterus, which expels the fetus and placenta out of the uterus and vagina. Normal labor is divided into three stages, dilation, expulsion, and placental delivery. Here we have the three different stages of labor. In the first stage, you have the first uterine contractions to the dilation of the cervix, where you actually have the presentation. Uh, second stage, birth of the baby and expulsion of the baby. And third stage, this is delivery of the placenta. Labor, the first stage is dilation. Stage one for the First time mother lasts eight to 10 hours and five to seven hours for a woman who has had a child before. And at the end of stage one, contractions are at regular three to four minute intervals, last at least 60 seconds each and feel very intense. We do have Braxton Hicks contractions, which are basically your false labor contractions. And the body itself uses these to practice contractions the only difference between these and uh, con real contractions is that they do not decrease in time and do not increase in intensity. Stage of labor, also known as dilation. The frequency or interval is the, is the time between the start of contractions. The duration describes how long the contractions lasted and the intensity or strength of the contractions describes the amount of pain associated with the contractile force. The second stage is also known as expulsion. During the second stage, the infant moves through the vaginal canal and is born. Contractions are less than two minutes apart and at least 60 to 90 seconds each in duration. As the infant moves downward, the mother experiences considerable pressure in the rectum itself. The perineum bulges, indicating impending birth. The infant crowns, and the head delivers by, and then the body follows. Third stage is placental delivery. 
In the third stage, the placenta is delivered usually within 5 to 20 minutes after the baby is actually exposed. Do not pull in the umbilical cord to facilitate delivery of the placenta. It will come out by itself. And if you actually pull, you might actually tear some tissue, which is going to cause a lot of bleeding. Remember that the placenta is directly attached to the uterine wall <clears throat> by blood vessels. Assessment-based approach, do a scene size up, primary assessment and secondary assessment. Determine if delivery is imminent. It is best to transport mother and labor so that delivery can occur at the hospital itself. Mating gestational age based on fundal height. Cons uh, consider that the closer to the top uh, of the fundus is to the cyphoid process, the higher the number of weeks the lady is in gestation. Gestational age by landmarks, the fundus is at the umbilicus, usually about 20 weeks. The fundus is at the cyphoid, about 38 weeks. If you decide to do a pre-hospital delivery, Make sure that there's no suitable transportation. The hospital or physician cannot be reached due to the bad weather or natural disaster or catastrophe, and the delivery is actually imminent. Determine the delivery is imminent. Has crowning occurred? Are contractions less than two minutes apart? Do they last more than 60 seconds in duration, the contractions? And does the patient have an urge to defecate, in other words, to go do poop? Uh, does the patient have a strong urge to push itself also? Imminent delivery, determine if the delivery is imminent. Is the patient's abdomen, is, is it extremely hard? That basically means that there's a contraction occurring. Take standard precautions. Do not touch the vaginal area except during delivery. Do not allow, do not allow the patient to use the toilet. Do not hold the mother's legs together and use a sterile OBGYN kit. Take appropriate stand precautions, position the patient, apply oxygen by nasal cannula, at least two to four liters per minute. Uh, create a sterile field, anticipate vomiting, and assess for crowning. We normally have, when we have an, a, a disposable section OBGYN kit, uh, we have sterile field sections to make the, the area sterile. We have four by fours, uh, five, by, uh, I mean, five by nines. We also have clippers to uh, clip the umbilical cord, scissors, and drapes. Delivery at scene. Apply gentle pressure to the head to prevent an explosive delivery. Now, at this time, we're not talking about the, the mother's head. We're talking about the baby's head when it's actually crowning. Ha! Tear the amniotic sac, if not ruptured, assess for possibility of nuchal cord. And this is the umbilical cord wrapped around the neck itself. And if you find this, make sure that you actually slowly detach it or wrap, de wrap it around. Suction the airway only if needed, deliver anterior, then posterior shoulder. Support the baby's body with both hands as it is actually delivered. Secure the baby's head, neck, and body, and grasp the feet for a complete delivery. Dry the newborn with towels, clamp the cord, and use sterile surgical scissors or a scalpel to cut it. And do an APGAR score uh, within one minute and five minutes after birth to see if there's any betterment of the, of the, feet, of the baby. Keep the newborn dry and warm, deliver the placenta, Place a sanitary pad or sterile dressing over the, va va the vaginal opening and perineum. Control postpartum hemorrhaging. Record the time of delivery. Transport the mother, newborn, and placenta to the hospital. And we have here uh, basically crowning when you see the baby's head actually coming out of the vaginal uh, opening. That's the, and here we have the head delivery. At this time, we try to, you know, the, bit, it is, the head is sideways. We try to actually deliver one shoulder and then the secondary, the secondary deliver the other shoulder. At this time, we do check to see if there's nuchal cord. Uh, and if there is, try to either clamp it or remove it from around the neck. 
and at this point we have the shoulders being delivered now remember when you're actually delivering the shoulders you want to press on the baby's head down a little bit to deliver the uh, the posterior the anterior uh, shoulder and then you push up to deliver the the posterior shoulder maintain a good grasp on the newborn and keep the baby level with the mother's body itself Provide newborn care, a newborn care, keeping the baby dry and warm. And then go ahead and clamp and cut the umbilical cord. At this, time, at this point, we go ahead and try it. The placenta is going to deliver itself, uh, but we want to help it. Sometimes we do basically just rub the stomach a little bit. The other technique is to actually ask the mother if she's going to be breastfeeding and see if we can start breastfeeding at that point causes more uterine contractions to occur provide blow by oxygen based on spo2 reading abnormal delivery signs and symptoms of abnormal delivery assessment based approach active labor with abnormal delivery do a scene size up primary assessment and secondary assessment is abnormal any presentation besides the normal crowning of the baby is abnormal umbilical cord protruding before the baby is also abnormal. An amniotic fluid with an abnormal color or smell is also abnormal. Assessment based approach uh, emergency medical care for the, and reassessment, emphasis on immediate transportation, administer oxygen, and continuously monitor for vital signs. Part of emergencies, we have what we call a prolapse court. And this is when the umbilical cord is actually presenting part before the baby is actually out. The cord may be compressed, cutting off oxygen to the infant. Instruct the mother not to push. Administer high flow O2 to the mother and put the patient the knee with a knee chest position. And what we do have here, uh, prolapse cord, you have uh, elevate the hips themselves, keep the baby's head airway from the cord itself. Do not attempt to push uh, the cord back. Wrap the cord in the sterile moist dressing so it doesn't dry up and transport the mother to the hospital, continuing pressure on the baby and the head. Breech birth. <clears throat> this is uh, when the buttocks or lower extremities are presenting. This condition presents at high risk of field complications. Transport is in, in a supine head up position you should not attempt to deliver the breech presentation in the field itself. And here we have a presentation of a breech delivery uh, where the feet are coming up. Breech birth. If pre hospital delivery is unavoidable, contact medical direction uh, for assistance. Have the mother push hard during contractions as is the infant delivers, support the legs. Allow the legs and buttocks to be delivered until the umbilical cord is seen. Delivery with entrapped head. Immediately begin emergency transport. Administer high flow O2. Insert a gloved hand into the vagina and attempt to manually push the cervix over the head of the entrapped fetus. As you try to go ahead and give the, uh, in case the baby starts breathing, give it a little bit of room so it can actually breathe. And this is also known as the Maracal Maneuver. Face, chin, brow, limb, or compound presentation. An arm or leg is the presentation part. Vaginal delivery is impossible. Administer hyperlobal 2. Transport the patient knee, chest, and knee chest position. We have a diagram of uh, two abnormal presentations, the limb presentations, the arm, uh, as in the uh, first one, letter A, and B, you have the leg first presented. Shoulder dystocia. The fetal shoulder is larger than the fetal head. The head delivers but retracts when into the vagina. And you have a presentation of shoulder dystocia. Basically, the same contraction that's actually pushing it out kind of pushes it back in. The patient on the McRoberts position. If the McRoberts position does not alone does not work, 
a place for pubic pressure. If the McRoberts position and the suprapubic pressure do not allow the delivery of the shoulders, you should be instructed by medical direction to attempt a Gaskin maneuver. Uh, baby delivery within three hours of the onset of labor is precipitous delivery, most common in multiparous, which is basically ladies that have delivered many babies, increased risk of trauma to the baby and mother itself. Multiple births, be prepared for multiple births if the abdomen is still very large after one infant is delivered. Uterine contractions continue to be strong after delivery of the, the first infant. Uterine contractions resume about 10 minutes after one infant is delivered if the patient or the infant is small compared to the abdomen itself. Meconium, which is a stainant we find in the amniotic fluid, is fetal distress can actually lead to fetal passing, uh, a bowel movement into the amniotic fluid. If the meconium fluid is stained, uh, it might actually be aspirated and cause pneumonia. Medical care. If meconium is present and the newborn has a good cry or vigorous activity, do not suction. If the baby is depressed or non vigorous and the heart rate is less than 100 beats per minute or is inadequate respirations, quickly suction the nose and mouth with a bulb syringe and immediately begin PPV, positive pressure vent. Preterm labor occurs between 20th and 37th week. Of gestation. Usually cocaine and other drugs are known to actually induce labor. Emergency care do not allow the mother to push and place the mother in oxygen. Term birth, an infant weighing less than five pounds or born before the 37th week of gestation. They're prone to hypothermia and respiratory problems. Care for the premature baby, dry the newborn thoroughly, Use warm blankets or a plastic bubble bag to swaddle. Use gentle suction if necessary to clear the airway and prevent bleeding from the umbilical cord. Administer supplemental O2 if needed and prevent contamination. Delivery beyond 42 weeks of gestation causes prematurity syndrome or deterioration conditions necessary to support the well-being of the baby. You have a high risk of complications and increased risk of interpartum hypoxia. Premature rupture of the membranes. You have spontaneous rupture of the amniotic sac prior to the onset of true labor and before the end of the 37th week of gestation. You have an increased risk infection, risk of infection and prevent adequate lubrication of the vaginal wall or vaginal canal at the time of birth. Postpartum complications. Postpartum refers to the period following delivery and involves a mother. Postpartum hemorrhage is the loss of more than 500 mLs of blood occurring after the, the delivery. The mother fails to regain tone after delivery. Manage this condition by frontal massage, administer oxygen, and transport the patient. complications embolism. Pregnant and postpartum patients are at increased risk of forming blood clots which can actually lead to pulmonary embolism. Amniotic fluid embolism may actually occur. Patients can actually present with shortness of breath, syncope, tachycardia, sharp chest pain, hypotension, cyanosis, and pale cool clammy skin. Embolism Ensure adequate ventilation and maximize oxygenation and transport the patient to the hospital. General considerations of the newborn. Neonates lose body heat very quickly. Immediately dry the newborn, wrap the baby in a blanket or a plastic bubble bag swaddle. Suction, the, suction to clear the airway only if obstruction to breathing is actually present. Place the newborn on, the, on their back 
with her neck slightly extended in a sniffing position. Assessment based approach, care of the newborn assessment. Score APGAR at one minute and five minutes after birth. Score each category with a zero, one or one or two in appearance, pulse, grimace, activity, and respirations. Use the APGAR to determine the need for resuscitation. Seven to 10 points provide routine care. Four to six points stimulate and provide oxygen. And zero to three points provide care, including oxygen, positive pressure ventilation, and CPR. If the newborn does not or is not breathing adequately, stimulate by rubbing the back or flick on the soles of the feet. Continually assess the newborn during transport. Most newborns require only routine care. Of those who require more care, most need only oxygen and back valve masks, ventilations. A few newborns require chest compressions and advanced care. Expected SpO2 readings in the newborn are based on the preductal reading obtained from the right upper extremity. The expected SpO2 takes several minutes to reach normal levels. Preductal oxygenation saturation is measured by placing the SpO2 probe on the right hand or extremity to measure blood oxygen saturation before it reaches the ductus arteriosums in the aorta. At one minute, you're going to have 60 to 65 percent. At two minutes, you're going to have 65 to 70 percent. At three minutes, you're going to have 70 to 75 percent. At four minutes, you're going to have 75 to 80 percent. At five minutes, 80 to 85 percent. And at 10 minutes, you're going to have to up to 90 percent. The majority of newborns who require intervention require only simple measures. Newborn bradycardia, less than 100 beats per minute, labor breathing, apnea, and persistent cyanosis typically respond to blow by oxygen or to bag valve mask ventilations. Simulate the infant who is not breathing by flicking on the soles of their feet or by rubbing their back. Emergency medical care. These three questions guide you to the need for resuscitation. Is this a term gestation? Does the newborn have a good cry or are they breathing adequately? Does the newborn have a good muscle tone? Interventions within 30 seconds to delivery, dry and warm the newborn, position the airway, suction if there is obstruction to breathing and stimulate by flicking on the soles of the baby's feet or rubbing on its back. Only a few will require aggressive resuscitation. If you look at this diagram, the intervention pyramid for neonatal resuscitation shows the majority of newborns will respond to simple routine care. Positive pressure ventilation, clear the airway by obstruction, provide ventilations by ba the bag valve mask at the rate from 40 to 60 breaths per minute, reassess every 30 seconds. If breathing has not improved, continue ventilation. Ventilate with just enough force to raise the infant's chest at least 40 to 60 breaths per minute or ventilations per minute. If the infant's heart rate drops below 60, continue resuscitation and begin chest compressions. To provide chest compressions, circle the torso with your fingers and place both thumbs on the lower third of the infant's sternum and the compressions. Try to go up to at least 120 per minute, compressions per minute. Now, if you have meconium present at birth, newborn is crying vigorously with good respiratory effort and good muscle tone. Newborn has absent or depressed respirations, poor muscle tone, or heart rate less than 100. Lesson summary. Pregnancy results in physiological changes for several, uh, to several body systems. You have antepartum emergencies, includes hemorrhagic emergencies and hypertensive emergencies. There are three stages of normal labor. Abnormal deliveries cannot take place in the pre-hospital setting. 
And the newborn resuscitation begins with simple measures such as drying, warming, and stimulation.